Hello everyone, my name is Dramat and today we're going to do a replay, <laughs> actually, uh, of a game that I played in Diamond 3 on a Rope West against the Mordekaiser on mid, but the purpose of this video it's not the game it's in itself and the lane phase and uh, things like that, but how I actually managed to solo create advantage by doing some macro plays based on enemy mistakes. So we're going to start right at the beginning, by the way I will have a huge score and probably carry most of the game because of it and I want to say as a disclaimer that this is still in diamond and these mistakes happen at every elo so you can expect them everywhere not only here so if you're even diamond 1 or below on any server because come on this is diamond 3 on west I'm diamond 2 now climbed again out of tilt you're gonna expect and see these mistakes so often in lower elos that's actually that's actually pretty legit a video that's about to come about the common mistakes of uh, some people. Now the common mistakes that I want to focus on is that first of all this Yumi is AFK here for a bit and as you're going to see now this video will be about how I generate advantage how I try to kind of abuse the mistakes of others. So here Kaiser just put a word and we see Yumi here AFKing they both seen it they both seen the word, they both seen the uh, Lux, Lux Q, so I say what? Okay, if they are staying here without even checking this area of vision, well then, you're going to see in a second, I'm gonna ping that I'm coming, I don't care. I don't care it's a 2 versus 3, I have advantage on Tulia. If we're being careful, we cannot lose this, they didn't work, they still didn't work, that's a mistake. And they still stay over the word even though they seen it. So. What's going to happen next? Well, disaster for them. Yumi didn't even use heal, although I don't think it would have helped. And even though here Xin had flash to actually knock up the locks, he didn't bother to use it. So I got two kills already. And the third kill, uh, look how I didn't use Q here, very important. I didn't use Q to enter the bush because I did not know if she's going to go this way. Or this way, very important by the way, before going into bush that you don't have vision. Okay, simply triple kill. Look at the scene, level 1, look at my jungler, already having two camps, doesn't matter that top lost, he's, it's a Riven with Ignite. Now my jungler will have huge advantage by this, and I'm going to do the lane quicker. I'll also play, I, by the way, I also play with uh, Arcane Comet. I find uh, I found out that in matchups that are melee, it's way way easier to play with Eerie or Comet, and I started doing that in most matchups actually Comet because it gives the necessary power to actually keep up in damage with some uh, champions. And look at that! Look at that burst. Uh, also, before that, I'm playing with Comet, Mana Flow Band, Absolute Focus, Scorch, and Minion Dematerializer, and Perfect Time in most games. In most games, I cannot in faces how good perfect timing is in most matchups. Now, main on the materializer is optional, you can go either for the biscuits or the cooldown reduction one, or secondary you can go for uh, time warp tonic, zonia, or time warp tonic, uh, and uh, biscuits, or any combination of those, depending on the matchups. If you're against assassins, well, I think time warp tonic and biscuits are more useful, or time warp tonic or, uh, or zonia into matchups like Zed or so. Anyway, moving on. It's minute 2 and 40 and Xin is barely starting his Gromp. He didn't go straight to the red. My jungler will go straight to his red and take it. And I just I just have to stroll around for a while. I don't really have level 3 now. Uh, but I can actually push him. I can actually push him even though he, I know he has teleport. I know he cannot kill him but... Uh, I know I cannot kill him but I know he has no ignite either to kill me. So, wait for the flash. Easy kill. Oh dear god here that... Now then he goes straight to Xin's red because he knows he can beat him and I can follow. Here he has teleport uh, but we don't care about it, he will use it, we will recall. That's what is important. Another important thing is here, as you can see, free, uh, free red buff. He should have flashed if he really wanted it but he might have still lost it. Here I did not understand really what happened, Fiora, Fiora came till here. More the guys that came till here, but they both stopped since they probably didn't see me, and we could have won because of the level difference. But the main thing is that now I'm 4 0, 
an advantage generated mostly because I actually pinged for Odir to come mid because he's a free, such a free kill when he pushes and because I went here because he didn't want to clear those words or to look after it or to position properly so they don't get caught. So I actually generated 4-0 advantage mostly by myself and the help of my teammates who actually listened to my pings. Listened without the team. Actually, that's, that's a pretty good thing to do to try to get the lead. That's what you should do to understand the macro, to play around the macro. Now there is a gank on top lane. Pharah is going to go this way and she will die. I already tell you what's happening. No one will die in our team and Zing cannot do anything right now because uh, it's an early game matchup between junglers. And we have the upper hand now that Odir has this huge advantage. Also, Mordecai isn't really doing much as you can see here. I have Ignite soon. I just just do my lane thing now. I, do, I will have flash for a long time now. They cannot kill him. I should have maybe go for this one. Look at the brights also. But the main thing is that Mordekaiser has literally no chance to kill me right now. Because he used his teleport. I have my ignite and flash up. And I just have to dodge that little pull thingy. And as you can see here. Bam. Dead again. 5-0. Minute 4. Basically I have a kill per minute. Let's speed it up. Oh dear. It's keep. It's doing the invade thingy, he's keep doing it, it's still invading as much as he can. He's, he's, the main problem here is that he tries to fight uh, this and his bad macro awareness actually get, got him killed because he should have known that Fiora got there first, we, me and Riven were both picked back. That's the diamond, low diamond mistake that you're going to see a lot of times. Now. I want to do a strategic word here to actually keep the abuse on uh, the Xin. And now, what do I do? I come back to mid lane, I know I have flash, I know I have ignite, I don't use flash, I just keep it. Uh, I will use it if I see the pool spell thingy, I don't know what's the name. But rather than that, I just get the free kill here, even if Odir wouldn't have come, I would have still got it. So 6-0, more CS, more advantage, 8 to the score, I have 6 kills in 6 minutes. And just by this point, I just need to play the map now. I just need to go where Udyr goes and keep the strategic advantage. As you can see here, Xin will flash. He still has flash. My, my Udyr does not. Perfect, perfect coming by Lux. Maybe if she flashed and ignited, it would have killed him, but it's not really relevant. More fights around the map here. We're not really interested in that. Uh, nothing really big is going to happen. More of the guys that tried to came here, he lost. Maybe some more CS because of that. But his lane is doomed by the early advantage and by the mistakes of his teammates and obviously there's no chance for him to actually win the lane. Only top has a chance because it's a Fiora with Ignite but because my interference and Urdirs, our Ribbon will start to actually win. And when he is, when she is 6 she will actually do fine. Now, standard farming, standard items. I have my Zonia soon, I have... Look at this, I go usually now for early Yonian Boots of Lucidity because of the movement speed and because they are cheap and also because of the summoner spells. I use those summoner spells a lot and the flash keeps you alive. Here I did a mistake, I knew she had the word but I did a gamble, I thought she was going to recall in this bush so I actually rushed. Did not know exactly where but then I see in her escape, no point to chase since she has her W. Tulia cannot do much against the Fiora if she doesn't kill her by Qs or E. Anyway. Straight back mid, straight back playing with jungler. Now most of my games I tell my jungler to follow my lead, to follow me, and most of them actually listen. And in matchups that are early junglers, we actually win most of them. He gets caught here for no apparent reason, but because he flashes, he's gone. I actually position here as such, the, I probably, they probably seen the word, that's why they didn't come this way. And I actually take the plates. So you basically have to take as many plays as possible when you have this advantage. You have to camp bot, you have to play with your jungler and help him secure advantage early. Now even though this does not look like a uh, huge advantage, the level advantage is there, the item advantage is there as you can see and he did way more ganks, 5 ganks compared to 1. Moving here, keeping the push on the lane, nothing spectacular but standard, standard poke. As you can see, uh, Arcane Comet actually came in very handy in the Mordekaiser matchup and even most range matchups, that was, that was a mistake. I know what you're going to say. I know what you're going to say, Arcane Comet does not hit when you use W. If you use W, it's not going to hit. Well, the problem with that, 
can be solved by simply queuing before and just using the combo after that no one forces you to do a full combo sometime you can just small queue procard can come and then do the full combo no problem no problem the poke is there the poke is amazing and also another important thing is the aggressiveness of these three mana flow band gives you so much mana scorch and absolute focus gives you so much advantage especially scorch for the small queues so much poke right there and it's actually helpful compared to electrocute build because electrocute gives you heal electrocute build gives you burst in the instant wq combo and heal heal by the taste for blood and the ravenous hunter and small damage from the other rune but compared to this you get much more damage, you get mana, you don't get that much heal, but you don't need heal that's early. Heal is for late game, okay? Only the taste for blood is useful a bit on the lane for the poke intensive matchups, but in poke intensive matchups you can go corrupting potion. As you see here, I also have a refillable. Look at the item build right here. Look at how many items and stackness I have on me compared to him. And I don't even try to I don't even try to abuse the advantage. I just I just I don't need to give kills to Xim, I just play my advantages, I just go bot when it's needed, I just kill him when it's available. I just deny as much as XP and as much XP as possible from him, as you can see there is a 2 level difference and 18 CS, well 12 if he takes the whole wave. But here again, I mistaked, I did a mistake here by doing a bad W and their bot lane here, this is, okay, this is a diamond tree. Now, now I will showcase Diamond 2 games after this one, but this is Diamond 3. At this point, if I go into the Fog of War here, they should recall instantly. But I decided here, I know I can get 3 kills because, look at this. But I decided to take some more plates to secure my advantage. Because if they are smart about it, they will go back, but they aren't really. So they are starting pinging me, of course, my team that I should go back, but I really wanted this plant. And I kind of knew that Sin is still here and they didn't recall because they want plates too. So, easy is the advantage that is still not lost. They should have recalled here. Well, the moment I disappear, they should have recalled. As you can see here, easy kill. And going bot. Alt to secure. I did not actually know if Isaiah has flash. I presume she does not. A good player would know if she has it or not. But I could have actually killed her anyway, probably because of a follow-up flash. I would have not used my W if she flashed instantly over that wall. Most players will flash instantly and don't don't sweat to use the W if your Q and E kills her anyway. As you can see I use W only on Yumi. So 900 9 gold uh, and uh, Riven is actually winning top because of Odir. I actually won the other lanes and there Mordekaiser is 0-3, their jungler is 0-3, the level difference on jungle is 1, on top is he's doing fine, but still Fiora will outplay her and again uh, probably with the ignite. Here, free kill. Actually Mordekaiser ulted and sent Odir to the death realm, but because he's so behind he couldn't do anything and he doesn't have flash. So I just took the kill from him because I did not want Odir to die. 10-0-0. You should actually you should actually help your jungler and take kills as much as you can if you know you can carry. So that's an important lesson as well here. Both lane got both uh, both killed, but we killed uh, Zaya. It's fine. Now here I hit this tower as much as I can. I notice on that word that there's a Zin coming. I don't care really. If I put the E down, I know I can kill him easily. 11-0. Sticking the advantage, keeping the advantage up. I press tab so that you can see what items I go for. I don't need Zonia here. Very important. I don't need Zonia here because I know I can kill uh, this guy. Uh, here, free kill. I actually tried to pass the kill to her. And normally I would have gone for Zonia's second item because I found out that the 40% cooldown reduction that you get is very useful. In many cases, you can spam kills basically and proc that arcane comet so often. And we just we just end the game here we just abuse the advantage that we got so basically i controlled whole game i went with it i picked my teammates to go where i wanted them to go mordekaiser should have deft here as well but being mordekaiser we know that he can be easily kited they don't have any slows besides maybe yumi q and maybe a bit of uh, knock up from zin but he has to proc it okay and we have an aftershock locks after all that procs it with a Q that's a long race stun, multiple people hit, easy advantage. And that's about the clip that I want to show you. They will surrender soon. It's not it's not a big deal. Uh, 
it's it's still a little more to go, but uh, you got the point in general. You got the point. Secure advantage early because you're Italia, play with your jungler, abuse any advantage that you can. Uh, try Arcane Comets for me and learn to practice with it, basically using Q before proccing uh, Arcane Comet with your W. So use Q Pro Comet, use full combo. It's a longer algorithm, but it works. You can also see on OP.GG that my scores are very good in the past games. I basically have a win streak now and I'm down to at zero points. I actually kind of climbed by myself. I, I tilted in two games possibly with Cannon and such because I tried new things. And I also have more games to showcase. So if you enjoyed this, leave a like, leave a comment and tell me what you want to see next, what kind of vibe videos you see, want to see next if you want to see live videos like uh, the one that where I talk over the plays that I do or this kind of tutorial. This is really a tutorial mostly, not a, a game review but mostly a macro tutorial to move around the map. And I don't think many people talk about the generated advantage and the pings that I did uh, early on, especially in that scenario I actually pinged your locks. Dude, let's go here, they stay on your ward, it's easy, it's very easy to get kills and we got 3 kills, I got 3 kills that, and then I didn't even lose whole game the advantage. This is a perfect idea in a perfect game by myself that actually I think carried most of the game. Uh, by the way, I got I, I got this game for uh, for honors or three. I got the badge that tells that I don't really remember how many three or four honors, but they really liked how I played. If it's the game, if it is a game, or this one or the next one. In one game I got, but I think this one because I'm 11-0, so uh, yeah. Anyway, that's how you try to generate advantage, even though they had pretty good players. Fiora would have stomped in other contexts with other junglers. The 2 versus 2, I'm honestly sure they might have lost this in a standard scenario where Xen starts here, other starts here, and both converge here and for a game. And giving this advantage here, actually one jungle, actually one mid, and bot lane just had to follow in top lane as well. But with two lanes that are winning and one that's contested and both junglers winning with... Both uh, top lanes are sometimes winning with the help of uh, junglers and their ultimates. Uh, just bot lane was to be... Just bot lane was to be won. And because they had a Xayah Yumi which is a very weak comp early. I mean into Lux Kaiza, Kaiza that scales and Lux that has CC to hit an um, immobile Xayah. Yeah, well, we kind of won that as well. So that's the macro tutorial that I wanted to do today. This is the general aspect. All It all started from a triple kill. And I really wanted to do a video on this because I wanted to show how to uh, actually generate advantage from your current advantage. How to actually play with your strengths. And as you have seen, I've put numerous words here to know where Xin is at all times. Odir also came mid. Odir understood that I'm the reason that will win the game probably, most probably early on. Because of all these champions, I'm the strongest early, and because Fira has ignited him, because, uh, well, they might win, but Kaiser actually scales very well, so the point is to camp the Talia that doesn't really scale well into the late game, but will scale extremely well into the mid game. Udir played with me, I played with him, we both helped each other, we got advantage, I got a good start here, and I tried to keep up the start and to get the next thing. I don't know, I really don't know why she didn't... Uh, why she didn't heal here. Uh, probably a beginner Yumi, probably a beginner Mordekaiser, a good jungler. I think I think the JR jungler had actually a good win rate, like 60% like overall, which means that's kind of kind of a smurfer, but by that, by doing this mistake here, the game was lost already. Yumi tried to escape here, doing a smart, really smart thing. A battle would have queued that way. This is some important things. Also, free kill on Mordekaiser because he pushed, I was pushed in. He had flash, but it was pointless because he had no way to kill me unless he dived me. And I played to my strengths. Other came, helped me. We got whole general map advantage from here to here. Only top lane got kills. Bot lane was safe, bot lane was winning. They started losing when I did not go in time bot, but I actually chose plates over the roam and then still got kills on the roam because we're in diamond and people are still quite bad about it. Anyway. That's my general tutorial for today, I really hope it helped, I really hope you enjoyed it and you learned something from it, that's my goal. My goal is not to make tons of money from YouTube, because if that would have been I would have quit long time ago, my goal is to teach people to actually play Tilia and things like that. I think this is one of my most educative recent videos, if I, I'm honest, I don't want to 
brag about it, it's not brag, it's my... Okay, I actually focused on what happened. I did not talk over a live video where I actually kinda am not able to focus that good. I'm, I'm, I'm able to focus here on talking exactly what's on my mind, exactly on what went good for us, what went wrong for them. Just don't stay on a word, please, when you clearly see it. Don't AFK at early levels. That's a mistake that I see even on Reddit posts. Please don't AFK early. Please don't invade if you're losing the matchup. Please be careful in fights on jungle if your match if your mid lane doesn't have priority. Tilia most of the time has priority. So there are things that you should consider. Okay. I'm done with this. This, this. this is too much talking already, but I really, I really hope you enjoy this kind of videos and I really try to teach people stuff. I don't really care about uh, how many people I reach if the people I reach right now are happy with the content I do. So let's do more of these videos because I now have time, I finish my studies, but I still have a job to take care of and like that. See you next time guys, see you next time and have a good one. Goodbye.